fans fought running battles in the centre of Copenhagen before tonight's UEFA Cup final between Arsenal and Galatasaray. Mobs of supporters started by taunting each other and it quickly developed into mass violence with knives, iron bars and broken chairs. Two Englishmen, a Turk and a Dutchman were badly injured. Police there say 20 people have been arrested. Today's riots could jeopardise England's chances of staging the 2006 World Cup. It was the image that English football had dreaded most. Arsenal fans involved in serious disturbances with rival supporters from Galatasaray. The trouble in Copenhagen's main square came this afternoon as the tension among opposing groups of fans once more spilled over into violence which the police were unable to control. Some rival fans were tightly packed into a narrow street and as the fighting continued, innocent bystanders were forced to flee from the scene. The police said tonight that at least 10 fans had been hurt, one Arsenal supporter received head injuries, the others were less serious. For the first time the Danish police had to use tear gas as large numbers of officers were rushed to the scene. A number of fans were arrested but the police refused to be drawn on who was responsible for the outbreak of violent incidents. The authorities' hopes of preventing a repeat of last night's violence proved hopelessly over-optimistic and Arsenal supporters were strongly critical of the police operation. They don't know what's going on, they don't know how to handle it. The way they handle it is to bring the dogs out is like fire tear gas. They don't know how to segregate it. And the Danish police cannot control it. It's just, they can't control it. Calm was eventually restored to the city square as a standoff developed between the police and fans. Anyone regarded as a potential troublemaker was swiftly dealt with. A short time ago, the Football Association gave their reaction to the disturbances. I'm quite happy to say that we work very closely, everybody worked very closely together in the preparations for this game. But also, everybody was aware of the, of the very difficult circumstances. And there are always lessons to be learned. Supporters of both Galatasaray and Arsenal are being strictly segregated inside the stadium tonight, although the problems so far have been away from the ground in the city square. The priority for the Danish authorities now is to prevent a repeat of those clashes later tonight. The police are maintaining a high-profile presence on the streets with several thousand fans expected to gather in the bars here late into the evening. Well, Paul Newman's at the stadium now. Uh, Paul, is it, is it quieter, at least as far as trouble is concerned now? Yes, yeah, certainly, Michael. I think the priority now, of course, is to move the fans away from the stadium. The Danish police uh, said a short time ago that they want to try and move as many fans out of Copenhagen tonight as possible. Now, of course, many of the Arsenal fans are on flights that will leave at about 1 o'clock in the morning, some 20 flights going out of Copenhagen tonight. But for many of the Turkish fans, and there's something like 15,000 here, most of those will be staying overnight and celebrating, of course, long into the night uh, and indeed into tomorrow. What are the wider implications of all this, uh, uh, Paul? How will this affect England's chances of staging the World Cup in 2006? You know, I think this is the key question. Uh, I spoke to David Davis from the FA earlier on this evening. He wasn't willing to get into a discussion on that issue. He said this was not the time. He also said that the FIFA executive who'll make that ultimate decision uh, recognised that there were hooligan problems at other countries around the world. Unfortunately, I don't think that's really the, the key point. The fact is that this has happened. It's not just happened at an unfortunate moment. It's it happened at a disastrous moment. We're just three weeks away from Euro 2000 with all the potential problems that that throws up. I don't think it really could have happened at a worse time. Paul, thanks very much indeed.